All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by J. Lauren Norris, who is in Justin, which is just outside Dallas in Texas. How are you doing, Lauren? I'm well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Excellent. And Lauren is a certified John Maxwell leadership coach. He helps companies uh, uh, you know, improve their their sales marketing, their leadership, especially works on leadership with with people. And what we wanted to talk today is about story power. And I love the title, Lauren, is unleashing the superhero within. So what do you what do you mean by the superhero within? So I, I tell people all the time that two clients that I fire first are the ones that say to me, help me write a speech that sells. Because what that tells me is for them standing on the stage and communicating is all about generating revenue. Mm -hmm. And that's fine, there are plenty of people that do that. But what I've found over the almost 15 years that I've been doing this process with people face-to-face, -face, I started with the Dale Carnegie program, is that it's not as much about the quality of the speech as it is about the quality of the speaker. Mm -hmm. And so most of my training is more focused on the superhero that is the person telling the story, not just the story itself. You can craft all kinds of stuff, and use NLP and all kinds of wiring, but to be the kind of person worthy of standing on the stage, that's who I want to work with. So I fire the customer who says, help me write a speech that sells, or the one who tells somebody else's stories more than they tell their own. So how do you help somebody who comes to you and says, you know, Lauren, I really, I want to do this, but I'm just not that interested. I don't think I'm that interesting. I don't think there, I really have that much to say. That's a great question. I'll tell you that it's a very similar question, although it doesn't even sound the same to why do I forget what I want to say when I get in front of the room? Mm. Or why do I get so nervous? I, I just get shaky and I have stage fright and I don't even know what to tell people. And here's what I've discovered. In most of those cases, I, I don't have anything interesting to say. I have stage fright. I can't remember what I have to say. It's because what they're saying isn't authentically them. What they're saying is someone else's jokes, it's someone else's stories, it's facts and figures, and none of those sell. They tell, but they don't sell. Mm -hmm. Stories are what sells. But in order to sell that story, you've got to believe in it, which means you've got to have ownership of it. Right. And then obviously for for people, there's, a, there's to be authentic and to reveal yourself or whatever, that takes a little bit of courage because especially because we live in a world today where it's so hard to separate fact from fiction because everybody is yes. branding themselves and everybody and we're seeing snap instant snapshots of people's lives and we're assuming so much about other people and it's making us feel inadequate. So it's it's obviously a challenge when you work with people now, right, to to get them to feel like they can be authentic. Well, and, and not just authentic. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I use Gary Vee as, as a great example. Uh, I do a lot of work in the church circles. And by that, I mean, I train with pastors and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Gary Vee is a brilliant salesman. He's a brilliant businessman. He's a brilliant communicator. He's got, you know, oodles and gobs of money more than I do. And he's a very effective person at what he does. But Gary Vee can't say his name hardly without dropping an F-bomb. Mm -hmm. Now, there's nothing wrong with what he does, and what he does is extremely effective, obviously, but that's not suitable for the audience that I work with most of the time. Right. So is he being authentic? Absolutely. But is he being relevant to mm -hmm. my audience base? And the answer is no, because what he says is authentic to him and offensive to them. And so when I talk about the, the four elements of good leadership and good communication, I talk about being relevant, having ownership, don't tell me a story you haven't lived through, having the authority both to demonstrate and, and exercise the authority of that. I've, I've done this. I know how to do it right. And also to empower me to live with that authority. And then finally, to be responsible for how I feel when we're done with this transaction. So a lot of people are authentic, meaning they'll tell you them their real self, but they do it in a way that's offensive or hurtful to others. Or when they're done, you're like, well, I'm glad you told me that story, but I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I, I love that uh, piece, obviously. Yeah. So there's, so you have to you have to be able to obviously be real to a degree, but you have to you have to temper that to the audience that you're speaking to or you're trying to sell to, right? So which is you have to adapt to that. Um, one interesting thing I see uh, I was reading here about, and 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 it's really it's really resonated with me a lot is this idea of the imposter syndrome, and I think that's what afflicts 
so many people yes. and that's what makes it makes them um you know fear from from doing a lot of things from from going out from speaking from being a better salesperson being a better entrepreneur or just being better at what they do because of this so can you talk a little bit about the imposter syndrome because i'm not sure everybody understands it but i bet you 99 percent of people have felt it i think people they feel it when they hear phrases like fake it until you make it mm -hmm. or they feel like they're in a place where all of their knowledge and all of their wisdom and all of their experience doesn't feel to them like anything special um uh, neuroscientist dr caroline leaf says it this way. She said, when, when you look around at the people around you and they're watching you with their mouths and their eyes wide open and asking maybe out loud, maybe just to themselves, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. And you're thinking to yourself, I thought everybody could do it. That's when you know that it's your unique gifting and no one else can master it like you can't. I think the challenge for a lot of people is their why is attached to their revenue. And when your why is attached to your revenue, your purpose is disconnected from your belief. At that point, the imposter syndrome just eats you up because you find yourself saying, well, I'm being authentic. I'm being authentic. I'm being authentic. No, you're being broke and you're being <laughs> broke because you're trying to do what you weren't made to do. I, no sheep in the world is going to win a horse race. His, mm -hmm. his legs are too short and he's not, he doesn't have enough focus. Right. It's not that he's a bad sheep, but he's a really bad racehorse. <laughs> and I think that's the challenge for a lot of people. The, the imposter syndrome for some is true because they're trying to fake it until you make it, trying to become something they're not. And rather than living what they were truly made to do, they want to create a passion and try to create an income out of that passion. Uh, all of us would love to be multimillionaires flying around on a jet. That's mm -hmm. awesome. But if the purpose of your life and the passion of your life are not aligned, you will be an imposter. So how do you go? How do you when you talk and work with people, how do you get them to uncover what their really what their real passion is and getting into alignment? Because I, I do believe I mean, a lot of people are out of alignment, like you've just described. And that's why they're, you know, maybe they're struggling. And that's why they're always trying the next new thing or, you know, trying to, as you say, fake it till you make it or whatever. So how do you help people really get to what they where they should be and where they should be focused? There's an old philosophy, and, and I ascribe to it uh, deeply, that uh, from the depths of a person's heart, they speak. Meaning, mm -hmm. without the brain mouth filter engaged, you're going to say what you really think. Whether that's when somebody cuts you off in traffic, or I smack you in the back of the head for no reason, or I kick you under the table at dinner. What comes out of your mouth with your natural reaction, that's the who that you really are. When we can get in touch with that who, what we often find is that deep inside ourselves, there is something we're very passionate about, something that means the world to us. And we really want the rest of the world to know about that. When we try to take that and bury it in the closet and instead live for something that's going to make a lot of money, i.e. write me a speech that sells, mm -hmm. our challenge is beyond that speech, we got nothing to offer. Uh, I generally wear a pineapple on my belt, a little rubber pineapple. It's a, actually a luggage tag. But the purpose of the pineapple is to remind people you could never, ever, 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 ever squeeze a pineapple hard enough to get ketchup out of it. It's right. not in there. Mm -hmm. But if I can help you discover what you're so passionate about that when I kick you under the table or I cheat at a card game or I cut you off in traffic, that it just comes out of you, that's the kind of stuff that the world needs to hear. That's the real you trying to come alive. And if you'll just live you authentically and be the real you, you will make an impact in the world and people will beat a path to your door for that. Yeah, and and I think uh, I I like I like what you're saying because um, I mean sometimes when I hear people say, well, you know, I am this is who I am, right? This is this, and and sometimes I go, Meh. is it or or if that's who you really are, well, maybe that's not the best person to be. Maybe there's a better version of you, you know, out there. And I think you're right. I think it's. I, I think, and again, getting back to, I think we live in this strange world um, where every where fact and fiction has become so mixed up, and people's personas and their online personas, and their, you know, as opposed to their real person, all of that is so mixed up. I think it's hard, it's hard for us to know who's who's real and who isn't. Right. I agree, and I think the other challenge is that it, when when you talk about authenticity, there's actually a I would call it a dotted line or a fade mm -hmm. point. Uh, like if you're looking at a, a blue square yeah. and it starts at white in one corner and it goes to dark blue in the other corner, somewhere along the line, there's a transition and it's hard to tell where that transition is. 
in my mind, that transition is the border between authentic and transparent. Mm -hmm. And transparent only comes when you're so comfortable with yourself, with your past mistakes and your future dreams that you can say, you know what, this is where I am today. And it's so very real me. You know, when some people are taken aback, they really step back and they go, so tell me a little bit about you. Tell me your story. And I say, well, I was molested at nine years old. I spent 25 years addicted to pornography. And they go, hang on, more than I wanted to know. I'm like, but you ask a real right. question. I gave you a real answer. So now we're at transparency and not just authenticity. Now the question that you have to ask yourself is, is that relevant to me? And for so many people, they're like, wow, that's a pretty serious 25 years of addiction. How did you get free from that? That's the point that we want to get to because how you transform yourself is through stories. Mm -hmm. And when your story is transformed, you transform other people's lives. And isn't that what we all standing on the platform, selling from the platform or selling from the across the table? That's what we all want is we want to tell the story that someone else hears and goes, I need that product. I need that service. I've got to join that club. I need that membership because we want to make an impact in their lives. Yeah, and and people want, uh, and I think, and also I think people crave that kind of, they crave that kind of honesty. But they, cra to your point, they, they really crave the how did you move on from that, right? So how did you, yes. how did you become the person you are today? Because everybody has challenges in their work life and their personal life. Some are big, some are not so big. But everybody has challenges, and everybody wants to learn from, you know you know, wants to get ideas from someone else about how do I overcome this? What can I ad adapt into my life? So you're, that's where you get the connection, right? Yeah, and I, I find this to be true as well. There are a lot of people who have a solution. Mm -hmm. but the challenge with many people's solution is it works right now on this day for this period of time. Right. And then once the market's saturated, the solution fails. Mm -hmm. Or when you forget to do this part, then the solution doesn't work at all. And the, here's what I do know. No Rubik's Cube ask for your political affiliation, your sexual orientation, your, your country of origin, your race or skin color or sexual preferences. The Rubik's Cube couldn't care less. If you have the solution for the Rubik's Cube, it will be solved by you every time on every continent on any day of the week, 24 seven, because that solution is a genuine solution. Mm. What I find for so many people is they craft a solution around a temporary problem that nobody has ever experienced but them. Right. And so did the solution work for them? Perhaps. But is it transferable? Probably not. And if it's not, then no amount of selling and no amount of crafting a great speech will make it viable for anybody else. Why would you buy what won't work now? Mm -hmm. Why would you buy what only works for one person? You know, I, I picture my, my granddad, when he passed away, he only had his left leg. Uh, he had lost his right leg uh, due to a car accident in his 20s. And I always wondered... What happened to 25 years of right shoes? Well, what did he do with them? <laughs> I mean, for the guy who only has his right leg yeah, and not his left leg, sure. that's a great solution. But for 25 years, he had boxes of one shoe. How do you apply that? What's the use of that? And I find that a lot of people's, whether it's a click funnel solution or it's a, a new tool online mm -hmm. or it's a sales process or, or whatever it is, if it only applies right now for a limited time and then mm -hmm. after that it's no good, then why use it? Yeah, and I, I think that's a great example that you use there because we're to, today, because of the ease of creating technology solutions, we're flooded with all these point solutions and these things that, are, as you say, it's like trying to solve this tiny problem right now. And if you if you adopted all of these tools, number one, you'd never get anything done because you'd be clicking <laughs> tools like crazy. But but they don't really solve the fundamental issues that you're having. They just tweak something over here on the side. Yeah, it's like hiring the exterminator to come spray your house for bugs one time. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't know where you live, but here in Texas, bugs, they're big enough to carry away your children if you're not careful. <laughs> and, you know, when, when you spray, all you do is piss them off. They run to the other side of the yard and they come back again later with a vengeance. <laughs> and so if you don't have a regular maintenance program mm. to fight these pests in your life, then the same thing is true in our mind. It's the same thing is true in the communication in our marriage. The same thing is true in our, in our study and our research. You don't do it once and finish. Mm -hmm. You begin on a journey that becomes a process, and that process is what leads you to the perfection of the craft. So many people, like I said, they want to write the speech that sells, 
Then they get the PR, they get the interview, they get the sales process, they get on the stage, they finish on the stage and people are like, that's awesome, come train our team. And it, the honest answer is I've just said everything I have to say. Right, right. Yeah. All right, I got nothing else to offer. <laughs> you squeezed all there is out of this pineapple. And so when I work with people generally, I'll say, let's, let's start with understanding that what no one wants, no one, wants a 45 minute soliloquy or a soap opera from the platform. Nobody mm -hmm. wants that. Nobody wants to hear I was born here and here I am today. Yep. What they do want is to recognize those instances where in a matter of 30 to 40 seconds, you can draw an illustration to 25 years of right shoes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and ask the question, what does that represent in your life? What's the one thing that you've been holding on to that serves no purpose for anybody, but save one person with only a right foot? Mm -hmm. And, and the, and and the same shoe on? size, right, obviously. Yeah, and so that when, we, when we can take our stories and say, this is a real life experience, I've been here, I've done this, I emotionally felt it. You know what we don't have to do? We don't have to mimic it. Mm -hmm. We don't have to act or portray. There are stories that I tell about my kids often. Uh, they're all grown now, my baby's 20. But when my daughter was three, we had an incident. I labeled the story, daddy's girl. But I can't hardly tell that story now without coming to tears myself Right. because I was there. It happened to me. But when I can take that story as an analogy and overlay that to a lesson that suits anybody, now all I've got to do is find the connecting words that make it relevant. So I may be talking to moms. I may be talking to daughters. I may be talking to fathers. But you know who doesn't care about that story at all, no matter how well I tell it? Teenage boys. Because they've <laughs> never been a father and they've never been a daughter. Yeah. And so there's no relevance to them, no matter how well the story is crafted. For a lot of people, that becomes the challenge. They want to get on the stage and tell a story that means a lot to them. Mm -hmm. And people in the audience are going, great, but I, I've never <laughs> been there. I haven't felt like that. I don't know why you're telling me this. And, and what's the call to action that's going to be worthwhile to me? How is it going to be, in the words of relevant, you've heard this a thousand times mm -hmm. in sales, What's in it for me? Yeah, yeah. That's the universal question everybody in the audience is asking, whether it's a webinar or it's a live presentation or it's a single call. The other person's asking, why are you taking up my time? And, and what do I get out of it when, when the end comes? Yeah, and I love that because it's, it's almost bookending what we started earlier with. I mean, some people who come to you and say, like, I don't know, I don't have anything interesting to say. There's the other end of the scale, as you say, is the person or the people who come and say, oh, I have this great story. Here's all the things that, you know, have happened to me. And to your point, you have to then sort of help them say, OK, this is great, fascinating, but I don't know what an audience is going to take away from that particularly right so you have you you obviously deal with both ends of the spectrum right and, and walking them through the process for the one who says i don't have anything interesting to say i usually just start kicking them under the table <laughs> and i see those passionate stories come out of their mm -hmm. life and i'll i'll ask them questions like so how was your dad when you were 12 i don't know mm -hmm. my dad wasn't around when i was 12 mm -hmm. interesting so would you consider that betrayal or neglect or was he killed in a drive-by or mm -hmm. ran off with a, another woman or another man? And what, what is the story behind the reality that at 12 years old you had no father figure mm -hmm. in your life? Right. Because there's a lesson in that story that you're emotionally connected to. And if you can figure out how to tell that story with a call to action at the end that's emotionally motivated, people go, I never really thought about how important it was to me that. Mm -hmm. But now that I hear you talking about living through it, I see that there may be a solution, even in my sales process, for when I encounter that person who feels like they've been abandoned and, and taken advantage of by the other seven contractors who promised to work on their house and they didn't show up. Exactly. exactly. And that's such a great, that's a great point. I mean, we're bumping up against the end of our time, but I wanted to focus on that for a moment. That is such a great point because I think a lot of salespeople do go into um, scenarios like that where there is resistance maybe resentment maybe outright hostility and they take it personally as opposed to saying yeah, I can see why they might feel like that towards salespeople once they uncover the experiences the prospect or customers had yeah most people call it overcoming objections mm -hmm. I, I think if, if you've set yourself up right to be the expert who has emotionally been in the same place as this customer, mm -hmm. who has experienced these things and can draw an analogy where they go, you get it. Yeah. There's not an objection. Or what they want to know is what's it going to cost for us to partner and how soon can we start? And that's an entirely different selling process because of the story behind it. I also know for a fact, most people think trust takes months to build. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that no like and trust are sequential. 
And when you reveal yourself in an authentic and transparent way, people know you differently than they did before you started. And then they can decide very quickly in a matter of a minute or less, do I like this person? Not are we buddies we want to go sure. have a beer, but are we similar in some way? Mm -hmm. Where do we have common ground? That's called building rapport. And then can I trust them? And I can tell you the number of times that I've just said outright, I was molested at nine, addicted 25 years. It impacted my marriage. Here's what I learned as a result. In 90 seconds, I can tell that story. And people back up for a minute and they go, okay, you get it. Now what? And there's a level of trust there. Mm -hmm. People start pouring out life stories to me that they would have never said to their priest. Right. <laughs> because I've been vulnerable and transparent to begin with. No like and trust doesn't take years. It takes authenticity and it takes transparency. Wow, fantastic, uh, Lauren. That's a great way to end. We're at the end of our time here. But before we go, I'd like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself, how they can learn more about you and the kind of things you do. Sure, you can go straight to my website. It's just my name, jlaurennorris.com. It's J-L-O-R-E-N, norris.com. And uh, if you just put slash coach, uh, it'll take you right to the page that gives you all the different options and uh, you know different things you can download and get started with today, but to get a better idea. And then I do a five minute leadership teaching five days a week. It's called Leading Leaders Podcast. If you use the hashtag Leading Leaders Podcast on any social media platform, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, you're going to find all of those videos. There's more than a thousand of them available. Right. Even if you just Google the hashtag, you'll find them there. And all of that's free, free to be downloaded, free to be used, however you'd like to. Fantastic. And I encourage people to do that. As you can see from our conversation today, you know, Lauren has got a lot of interesting things to say and, and great perspectives. So I just want to thank you again for joining me. My name is John Golden, Says Pop Online, Says Magazine, Pipeliners, CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.